What's up, Abe Kislevitz here, and I've got another tutorial for you today. We're gonna to be looking at adding realistic camera motion to otherwise static GoPro time lapses, night lapses, and even some video. We're gonna be taking pretty standard shots and breathing a whole lot of life into them. Thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. We're gonna be hearing more about that a little bit later. First, I will say, if you haven't seen the lens correction tutorial I released a couple weeks ago, Definitely check that out first because this tutorial is building directly off of everything that I explain in that video. So today we're gonna to be using the plugin FX Reframe in Premiere, After Effects if you want to because it's compatible there. And we'll be adding lens correction and then we're gonna take it one step further from the previous tutorial and we're gonna be adding motion using keyframes. I've been using this flow for pretty much all of my time lapses that I post to social media. I've always gotten a lot of questions of if I'm using motion controllers or sliders. 99% of the time, I'm just shooting static time lapses because it's infinitely easier to just set a camera down than bring all the gear. The gear is awesome, but it is expensive and it's cumbersome. So we're gonna be showing you how to add a whole lot of life into those static time lapses and shots. Let's do it. Welcome, I'm in Premiere today. I've already set up a project where I have some raw time lapses and a couple drone shots. I've got a couple sequences I've already set up. So I've got 4K, 1080p, social nine by 16. We'll probably work in 1080p today and then I will show you uh, a little bit of the social nine by 16 and just kind of show you how the motion stuff works. So I've got this star lapse video. This is a static time lapse and we just want to add a little more life to this shot. So I'm going to take the video, drag it into my timeline, keep existing sequence settings. And as you will recall from my lens correction tutorial, the first thing that we need to do is go up to effect controls and scale this so it fits the frame. And uh, as I mentioned in my lens correction tutorial, I like to work with proxies to make everything a lot faster. So if you haven't pulled proxies for your clips, I recommend that for a faster workflow because these videos are pretty big, especially if you're dealing with time lapses that are at 4K, 4.3, or even a full raw time lapse. We're gonna go to effects and type in FX, and we have the FX reframe I have a preset saved FXR that we set up in the lens correction tutorial, but I'm just gonna walk through really quickly getting that from the get-go. So we're gonna add FX reframe, and in FX reframe, the first thing we're gonna do is under projection, just make sure that's source image, and then under source operations, let's uncheck mirror edges. Let's go down to advanced control, and uncheck motion blur, that's gonna help with the speed of this, but actually when we add motion to it, we might wanna add motion blur back on. So we'll hit that a little bit later. The default for lens curve that we're gonna set is 70. Now's a good time to save this as a preset if you haven't done so already. Right click, save preset, FXR, GoPro time-lapse or something if you want. It'll just pop into your presets over here. So while we have all of these options open, go ahead and make sure sync keyframes is checked. We're gonna be using that today to make sure all of our keyframes add in unison. So that's something we'll just add once and then forget about it for the rest of the time. Let's just double check our EIS crop. I explained that in the lens correction tutorial, but for this clip specifically, it's static, meaning there's no EIS crop, meaning we wanna change this 10 to zero. If we want to see what's going on with this clip, I'm just gonna zoom out to show you. So we can see that by adding our lens curve, we are pulling out the edges of this clip, which gives us a lot more room to play with and add some motion in post. Now's a good time to explain the on-screen controls of GoPro FX Reframe. So you just have to make sure you click GoPro FX Reframe, this little title header of your effect, 
and then you'll see these on-screen controls pop up. The middle area controls the pan and tilt. So if you click and drag anywhere, that's adjusting the pan and tilt, and you'll see the numbers are changing over here. The sides, left and right, control the rotation. The top and bottom areas control the zoom in and out, and the corners, all four of them, control the lens curve. So these are handy to know when we're adding keyframes. It's much quicker to do it on screen than to be changing individual parameters. And that sync keyframes is going to make it so if we just change something like the pan and tilt, it'll go ahead and add keyframes for everything that we have keyframes turned on for, which makes adding motion in unison across the whole video a lot easier. So to get ready for keyframes, it's going to happen in this area. So I'm just going to make this a little bigger so we can see. So let's swivel everything up so it's a little cleaner to work with. Swivel advanced controls up. And now we're looking at pan, tilt, rotate, lens curve, and zoom. For adding motion to this clip specifically, I probably will adjust everything except for the lens curve. So I'm going to keep that constant at 70. And then to start our keyframes, just click this toggle animation button. So we're going to do animation for pan, tilt, rotate, zoom. And then lens curve, we're going to leave open. And then under advanced controls, we're also going to toggle on X offset and Y offset, just in case we need a little extra help to move the frame around a little bit. So to start, we'll just get our first frame by clicking and dragging the zoom in. And it's going to be saving this position in the keyframes. So let's get a good starting frame. And then we'll just go forward in time. And so here, it doesn't matter where we add our motion it's going to set keyframes for everything in here that we have checked on, except for the advanced control stuff. And so that's what that sync keyframes is doing. Even if I only adjusted pan, it's going to still add a keyframe for tilt, rotate, and zoom. And that just makes things a lot cleaner to have all of your keyframes changing in unison. So about four seconds in, let's say we're going to zoom out a little bit and then pan up because we want to start seeing some stars. And then from here, let's say we want to follow the Milky Way across the sky. So we could do some rotation, move this over here. And then the goal is to just make sure there's no black spaces. So you can see how doing a social frame where it's not so widescreen, you'd have a lot more room to work with. But that's OK. We can zoom in here. And we got a lot of resolution to work with. So let's just say we do that. That's kind of as far as we can go. And let's see what that's looking like. That's pretty nice. So then maybe we'll come back and get re-centered for the sunrise and maybe show a nice wide. At the very end, I like to usually try to loop my videos. So what you can do is you can select all of your beginning keyframes Command C, copy them, and then paste them here at the end, which means that your beginning and your end will look the same. And so if you want to see what that looks like, you can just hit I. And then at the end here, let's say we want to end a little bit early. So let's hit O there. Turn on this looping button here, loop playback. If you don't have it in here, click this plus, And then you've got all of your extras here. And you can just click and drag whatever you don't have down into this uh, bar here. So if you turn on loop, it's a great way to see if your little loops are going to work well or not. Um, and then we'll just drag those end keyframes right up to the end. So let's see if that matches up. And it does, which is awesome. So we have our basic keyframes in, and I know that was pretty fast. So if you don't quite understand what's happening with keyframes or what they are, I suggest doing a little bit of research about keyframes. This is kind of an advanced tutorial. But now that we have our keyframes in here, we have very bad motion. So it kind of bounces from each keyframe to keyframe. And we want to add really nice motion between all of these. And luckily, it's pretty easy to do that. So we'll just select all of these keyframes using our cursor, right click, and go to Continuous Bezier. And what that's going to do is automatically apply a very nice curve between all of these things. And it should be pretty perfect right away. Nice. 
So that does a good job. If you need to make any adjustments, you can go ahead and hold shift to snap to your different keyframes. Just make sure you put your cursor on the keyframe itself. Make your adjustments to the frame. What happens if you do that, sometimes it breaks the smoothness. So I suggest highlighting all of the keyframes, right clicking, switching them back to linear, and then switching them back to continuous, and that kind of resets all of the stuff. Just so you know what's going on under the hood, if we swivel down any one of these attributes like pan, we can see two curves. The first one is a value curve and the next one is a velocity curve. What you wanna do is make sure that this velocity curve stays smooth throughout the entire video and that's gonna give you that smooth motion. When you do click and drag something, you'll see this velocity curve now is broken because it goes here and hits there. And so if we watch the video, you'll see it bounces. The thing that you need to do is grab this and just make sure that both sides kind of come and meet in a smooth curve. And that will ensure that you have a smooth transition between this keyframe. The difficult part is that it will have affected all of the keyframes all the way down. So the easiest thing you can do is select them all, switch them to linear, reset the whole thing, and then you will be good to go from there. All right, so you can see how adding motion is pretty basic. It just takes a little bit of practice and doing it over and over again to figure out kind of what camera moves look good and what works, what doesn't work. But this is the basic gist of how to do motion with a static time-lapse. Now that we have the motion in the time-lapse, we can scroll down to advanced controls and check on motion blur and just see if you want it. I typically leave it off, but if you do have some fast moves left or right, it is sometimes nice to get a little bit of nice motion blur in there. So the next thing that we're gonna do is take a clip that's way too long than uh, what we're trying to work with because time lapses typically end up not being exactly the length that we want. And a lot of times I end up speeding them up a bunch in post, but it is nice to understand how to deal with time changes while you're also dealing with keyframes because they don't really mix well. So what you're gonna end up needing to do is do some nesting. I have this raw time lapse, which ended up being a minute and 20 seconds I'm just trying to have this thing be probably 30 seconds. So I'm gonna click and drag this into the timeline, keep existing sequence settings. And instead of adding FX reframe directly to this clip, I need to first put it into a nest to add my speed change. So I'm gonna right click and go to nest and we'll call this nested time-lapse. I'll double click nested time-lapse. This sequence setting needs to match my original clip's resolution. So if I go up to sequence, sequence settings, my frame size, if I look down here, this one was actually a raw photo time-lapse. So it's 5568 by 4176. So we'll just type that in. 5568 by 4176, enter, okay. And we'll zoom to fit, make sure that's correct and effect controls, your clip should be at 100%. Because this clip is a minute and a half long, select it, Command R for speed change, and let's try 400%. That's gonna get us about 20 seconds for the whole thing. So now that our clip is sped up, we're gonna go back to 1080p. The first thing that we need to do before we add FX reframe is scale down to fit the frame. So that is gonna be right there, 34.8. Now we're gonna add FXR GoPro time-lapse and we are in there. And I'm gonna turn on pan, tilt, rotate, and zoom. And so now I can add my keyframes just like I was adding it to a raw clip, but it is on the nest that has the speed change in it. So moral of the story, if you wanna speed up your time-lapse, just make sure it happens inside of a nest because when you're combining keyframes using FX reframe with changing speed in the same clip, you'll end up getting really weird results and things just don't really work right. All right, I think it is a perfect time to take a little break. We're gonna hear from our sponsor, Storyblocks. Storyblocks is a subscription service that has everything you need for video content creation from After Effects templates with transitions and titles to sound effects, and of course, stock video. Their unlimited all access plan gives you unlimited downloads of everything on their site. And the best part is it's all royalty free, meaning you can use it in your personal projects and your commercial projects for clients as well. 
check the link in the description below. I get a ton of inspiration just by browsing through what's available on their site. Thanks again to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to the tutorial. Now that we've seen how to add keyframes for normal 16 by nine video, let's go ahead and add it for social nine by 16 and just kind of see how much room we have to work with. So in my social nine by 16, I have this sequence size of 1920 by 1080 vertical. I'm actually gonna go ahead and grab the nested time-lapse that I just made because I wanna use this time-lapse in an Instagram story. And the first thing that we do is scale it down to fit the frame as we learned in the lens correction tutorial. So that's gonna be right there. And we'll go to effects, GoPro time-lapse. So maybe we'll follow the stars. Fun fact, this was actually a night of a lunar eclipse. And uh, unfortunately, we had a cloud layer, but it popped out at the end and was super cool. So the goal here is to just make sure you don't end up with any black on the edges. So we're going to select all, hold shift to grab the first keyframes if you didn't grab them with your mouse. Right click, continuous bezier, and let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's cool. Now that we know how to add this for static shots, I'm just gonna show you how I've used it for shots that are in motion, um, mostly drone shots to add a little added flair to it. So I've done stuff where it looks like I've shot it with an FPV drone because I'm adding tilt and rotation, but it's actually just a normal straight drone shot. So I've got two different types of clips here. One is a drone shot, so we're gonna add some motion to this, make it a little more lively because right now it's just kinda cruising straight. A little boring. The next one is a time warp. So this car is driving on the road and I actually use this in my 5K cinematic reel. So let's start with the drone shot. So we're still working on our 1080p timeline. I'm just gonna drag this in, keep existing settings. And the first thing that we need to do is go up to effect controls, scale down to fit the frame size and now we can add our FX GoPro time-lapse and we're gonna do pan, tilt, rotate, and we'll keep lens curve and zoom off. So those are just gonna stay constant throughout the whole thing. Um, so let's zoom in to start just a little bit. As we go through this little gap, I just kind of want the camera to rotate to the left and then rotate to the right and kind of give it like, a, like an FPV banking shot. So then maybe a third third of the way here and we'll rotate the other way, maybe rotate back there. And so we have zoom on constant. So if I adjusted the zoom, it's gonna adjust it for the whole thing. But let's just do that. Uh, maybe slide this over and let's right click continuous bezier and let's see what that does for us. So that is a drone clip with a little added flair. And let's pop in this time warp. The first thing that we need to do is scale it to fit the frame. So we're going to add our FXR. I'm just going to use my GoPro normal one, same thing that we saved. I'm just going to be adjusting the pan and tilt on this one. We'll keep rotation, lens curve, and zoom constant. So we'll do pan and tilt. We'll start with the keyframes at the beginning, scroll to the end. What I'd like to do is just have it go from looking down to looking up. It's pretty standard. And maybe I'll zoom in just a little bit to even accentuate it a little more. And I'm going to go as far as I can before I hit the black and then go back to the front and go as far down until I hit the black there. This was shot in 4.3, so I have a little more room to work with above and below, which is nice. And then from here, we will select these, hold shift, select those, right click, continuous bezier. Let's see what that does for us. Pretty cool because normally your time lapses on a car are all just looking straight ahead. And so to add even just something that looks up into the clouds moving and seeing the clouds move adds a whole other dimension to these kinds of clips. All right, so I think that's it to adding motion in post to either static shots or slow moving video. I use this in pretty much all of my static shots. 
Um, it's been hugely helpful for me and just making my videos that much more dynamic and you can really get intricate with the keyframes. If you do make anything cool and you wanna share it, shoot me a DM on Instagram or tag me. I love to see the stuff that you guys are doing out there, especially stuff that's inspired directly by these tutorials, and that will inspire me to do more tutorials in the future. All right, thanks for tuning into this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. We've learned how to take a static GoPro time-lapse, add lens correction, use that extra room to add motion, panning and zooming, add a whole lot of life to an otherwise static shot. If I could bring a motion controller and a slider to every campsite I go to, I would, but until then, shooting a static time-lapse on a GoPro is infinitely easier. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I've got more tutorials coming at you and a lot of fun content coming soon. Until then, I'm Abe Kislevitz, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks.